some of these ideas like telepathy and remote viewing, why do you think they don't, they are not accurate or it doesn't happen every single time? Oh, yes. Well, most of this, you know, I, I just mentioned that there's another whole world out there that is yours to interact with if you want it enough to learn how to do it. But all of the various kinds of information that I was just talking about that are available to you uh, as you kind of grow the quality of your consciousness, as you get rid of the fear, it's the fear and the ego and the belief. Now, ego and belief are both um, developed by the fear. So fear is the fundamental thing. And the fear then creates the ego. The ego's job is to pretend that the fear doesn't exist, to convince you of that. And the, um, the belief is it's just a, a kind of a, what kind of a cop out of doing the hard work yourself. It's just easier to believe something than it is to really dig into it and, and have critical thinking and you know determine whether it's true or not. So it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a shortcut that often traps you. So anyway, all of these things are subject to sometimes work better than others. Okay, now why is that? Well, that's because we're doing that here as an avatar, okay? We're, we're playing as avatar, we're consciousness. So we're gonna kind of let the avatar go. We're gonna meditate. And when we meditate, we kind of turn the avatar off, right? We just don't pay much attention to our bodies anymore. When we meditate, we let the body go and we just start getting data, okay? But we are still restricted by the rule set, the avatar's rule set, because we are, we have logged on to this avatar, and it's a totally immersive log on. Okay, it's not like playing your elf in World of Warcraft where you can get up and go to the bathroom. Okay. So it's not like playing your avatar in World of Warcraft where you can put it on pause and get up and go on with your life. You know, take a bathroom break, uh, get some lunch, uh, whatever, chat with someone else about some other subject. It's not that way. When we log on, and I, we do that through a a, a partition in our free will awareness unit that I call, and uh, a partition in our individuated unit of consciousness that I call free will awareness unit. So that individuated unit of consciousness partitions off a part of itself, and that gets immersed 100%. So that when it becomes aware, it's only aware of what that unborn infant can see and feel. That's it. That's its total reality, and it never can log, you know, it never can won't put it on pause and go do something else. That is its total reality. So that free will awareness unit, subset of that individual unit of consciousness, very quickly takes the identity of that avatar because it knows of no other identity. Right? It doesn't come in with any intellect. I mentioned that before. So it's totally immersed. Okay, now that rule set that defines that avatar then sets the constraints on what this free will awareness unit can do. If the free will, will awareness unit says, flap your arms and fly, well, it won't happen because the rule set doesn't support people flapping arms and flying. Same in World of Warcraft. Tell your elf, flap your arms and fly, and your elf will just stand there flapping its arms. Nothing will happen because the rule set doesn't support it. That's the, the rule set's what we call science, what we call physics. Scientists try to dig out the rules. What are the rules, you see? So you're limited by what your avatar can do. So the avatar is your limitation. That's what it does. It basically sets the constraints on what the system will do with your choices. Okay. So you have to train this free will awareness unit who thinks it's an avatar to get rid of the noise in its mind. Well, training helps it do that, but it doesn't do that perfectly. You train this, this free will awareness unit to get out of its intellect and work from the being level. Where you are, not what you think you are. Not your image, but who you really are. And you can do that, but because of your habits with that, free, with that avatar, you keep jumping back into the intellect and noise comes into your mind and you think things. So you tend to have a problem doing that perfectly. 
and even doing it precisely. So that, and doing it for very long. Every time you sit down and meditate, all of the people listening to this who are meditators will know that every experience is unique. They're all a little different. You don't just repeat the exact same thing every time. Every time you do a meditation, you're in a little different space. Your mind goes in a little different directions, places. They're all unique. That's because every time you start, you're unique. You're not the same exact person. Every time you have a mood or an idea or an attitude or something that's, that's got you uh, annoyed or excited or whatever else, you're a little different. Now you try to meditate, you reach a little different space in a different way. So the reason that, that uh, people who remote view don't get it right all the time is that this is not a machine. We're not talking about an objective machine here. We're talking about a subjective process that is limited by a rule set. Okay? And it's limited by the ability of that free will awareness unit, which is now your local consciousness. That's your you know, consciousness that's local to you. By its ability to quiet its mind, stay focused, and uh, work just from the being level, not from the intellect. Well, those are hard things to do. So if you practice remote viewing, or practice anything else, practice healing with your mind, that's another thing that you can do. You can make the telepathy much better. You can make your intuition much better. And if you practice these things, you'll get better at it and better at it, but you'll not be perfect. And that's because it's very, very hard to stay in that state that that works for you and stay there perfectly without changing, without anything going on because you're this consciousness that's constantly bubbly, constantly thinking, things are constantly going on. So you'll find that the really good remote viewers have a accuracy rate of about 85%. About 85% of the time they can nail it. And probably 95% of the time they get Either they nail it perfectly or they get close. They get parts of it, you know, major pieces of it. But there's always those times that they don't because this avatar and its rule set comes to the table different every time. Well, they sit down to do it this time, but they've got just a little bit of indigestion going on. Or they just had a fight with their teenage daughter. Or, you know, they just have another big meeting coming up tomorrow and they're not prepared for it. Or, and it just goes on and on and on and on. Our lives are packed with stuff and we can't always just be there and do this precisely. The second thing is you only get the data. You don't get the interpretation. You have to make that up out of your own experience. So that's the second reason why you don't always get it right. Okay, you'll see You'll see, you know, your remote viewing, and you see this kind of circular thing, and it's got a thing going this way, and maybe a thing going that way. And you go, ah, it's a clock. All right, it's circular, it's got two hands in it, it's a clock. Well, it's not a clock at all. It's one of those things for taking corks out of wine bottles. And it's got this head thing, and it's got two arms, you see? And you, and you know, it looks like maybe a little person, but it's, it's the whole thing. Maybe it's, you know, it's got this, this circular shape to it. It's all kind of within a circle. So you, you come to different things. You might look at that and you say, oh, well, that's a person, arms and legs. Well, it's not, it's a court thing. Or you see round things with arms in it, and maybe it's one of those apple cores where you have sections and you stick it on your apple, and it's round, it's got things going out on it. So you see, you get data, and then you have to interpret the data. Now, good remote viewers practice not putting their interpretation on the data. That's what makes them better, okay? They have protocols that force them to get their intellect out of it. You know, remote viewers almost always work triple blind. There's a set of targets that person A makes. They get a set of 100 targets, let's say longitude and longitude to someplace on the planet. They give, they take each one of those Targets, put it in an envelope, seal it. So there's 100 envelopes, stir them all up, ran them, get them to a person B. Person B takes all of those envelopes and uh, 
They also randomize it, and they take it over to person C. Person C takes that envelope, picks one of them out, goes over to the remote viewer, and says, tell me what's at the spot. Never opens the envelope. Never looks at what's inside. The remote viewer never touches the envelope. But the remote viewer is supposed to tell them what it looks like at these coordinates that are sealed inside this envelope, you see. And you think, wow, that's really tough. No, that makes it easy. Because what that does is it helps the remote viewer get his intellect out of the equation. Because our intellect always wants to solve the problem. And it's hard to make it not do that, because that's what we do here. But there, it's a problem. So they have this triple blind so that the remote viewer has absolutely nothing to guess. He's got zero information. So there's nothing that his mind can do to solve the problem. And that makes it easier for him, not harder. Because now it's easier for him to get his intellect, set it aside, and not guess at things. But now he'll start, he'll start getting stuff, and now his intellect will jump in and make an interpretation. Oh, that's a clock. Oh, that's an apple slicer. Oh, that's this, that's that. And it'll mess him all up. It'll be wrong. So you've got to make that intellect sit down and be quiet. And often remote viewers just do pieces. They work like artists. They'll draw a little piece here, and then they'll stop nothing. And they'll draw a little piece here. And if they start to think, what is that? They'll ruin it. They have to just stay, you know, in that good state until they get it apart. And then they look at it, and it means something. That's how they work. So it's not easy, you see, to get your intellect out, because all of our experience in this world, we lead with our intellect. Well, there, you have to turn that off. Well, you've got, you know, however many years you've been alive, that's how, that's how many years of habit you have of doing that. It's not an easy thing to suppress or control. So we have those, those things, and your interpretation then makes a big difference in what you see. There are many levels of distortion. Yes, many levels of distortion. And the, one of the biggest ones is your interpretation. Another one is your intellect gets involved and tries to, tries to guess. And these things are so habitual with us that they're very difficult to turn off. That is the problem. So there's another, there is another set of distortions that you can also get. And that is, remember, this, this system, this larger kind of system, is not a machine either. You see, people tend to think of the environment, you know, everything's a machine, right? In the physical world, things just work according to the rule set. Well, now we're talking about the larger conscious system. It's not like that. It's aware. It's conscious. It has free will. So it wants you to grow up. It wants you to lower your entropy. That's what you're there for. And it will help you do that. So the way it helps you do that is that it's not going to let you, it's not going to give you data that's going to end up raising your entropy. Well, it might let you do that to some extent, but it's going to nudge you constantly toward uh, growing up rather than not growing up because that's what you're here to do. So you may get things, let's say you're a remote viewer, and you start to build your ego up around that remote viewing, and you say, well, I'm just such a hot remote viewer. I get it right almost all the time. And then somebody asks you to do something, or you're doing this remote viewing on your own, and you come up with something really goofy, like the, bat, the dark side of the moon is full of little green men with pointy ears, right? So because you're so confident, remote view, it seemed the same way. And of course, everybody laughs at you because we've had pictures of the backside of the moon from satellites going around it and so on. And it's not full of little green men with pointy ears. So you make a fool of yourself. Why? Because the system gave you misinformation because your ego was getting out of line and was starting, your remote viewing was starting to be more of a ego trip, you see? And that means you're de-evolving. Well, the way to put an end to that is to give them a little misinformation and bring them down a bit to the ego realm. You see? So the system will do things like that sometimes. Now, this is a rarer thing. It's not like it happens all the time. But like I say, you get information from these three sources. You never know what the source is. So another place where the information will give you, I mean, the system will give you misinformation. Some people will stop making their own free will choices. 
they get to the point that their intuition gets good. They make up a little set of tools that they're good at getting data from the system. And they feel pretty good about that. Look, I get data and it's always right. Then they stop using their own free will. Anything they want to do. Should I go shopping today? I don't know. Let me consult the Oracle, you know, and they'll take out their crystal or their pendulum or their meditation or something. And they'll say, no, said it wasn't a good time. Or yeah, this is a good time. So pretty soon they are giving up their free will. They're no longer making their own choices. They're letting this information make choices for them, which means they've given up their ability to grow. Because it's not what you do that's important. It's the choices you make. It's your, it's your intent and your choices. That's what makes you grow. So if somebody else, even if it's a wise and knowledgeable somebody else, tells you everything to do, you're not going to grow up. Even if you do all the right things at the right time, you're not going to grow up because you're not doing it through your own choice, you see. So as you get these believers now who have gone from open-minded skeptics and they've become believers, so they'll consult the oracle every time they want to do something. And uh, the system will give them often misinformation, just it's kind of a little, you know, poke, a little slap, if you will, to stop that, cut that out, make your own decisions. Don't just follow, you know, what you get through this meditation or through your pendulum or your crystal or whatever else you might be doing. You got to think for yourself. So sometimes the system will mislead you.